Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool for here being you in their Minecraft Cold War Bath to Build tutorial. In this tutorial, we go ahead and building the modernized USS New Jersey, BB-62. USS New Jersey is an Iowa-class battleship and was the second ship of the United States Navy to be named after the U.S. state of New Jersey. She was often referred to fondly as the Big J. New Jersey earned more battle stars for combat actions than the other three completed Iowa-class battleships and was the only U.S. battleship providing gunfire support during the Vietnam War. During World War II, New Jersey sailed targets on Guam and Okinawa and screened aircraft carriers conducting raids in the Marshall Islands. During the Korean War, she was involved in raids up and down the North Korean coast, after which she was decommissioned into the United States Navy Reserve Fleets, better known as the Mothball Fleet. She was briefly reactivated in 1968 and sent to Vietnam to support U.S. troops before returning to the Mothball III in 1969. Reactivated once more in 1980s as part of the 600-ship Navy program, New Jersey was modernized to carry missiles and recommissioned for service. In 1983, she participated in the U.S. operations during the Lebanese Civil War. New Jersey was decommissioned for the last time in 1991, after serving a total of 21 years in the active fleet, having earned a Navy unit or accommodation for service in Vietnam and 19 battle and campaign stars for combat operations during World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the Lebanese Civil War, and service in the Persian Gulf. After a brief retention in the mothball fleet, she was donated to the Home Port Alliance in Camden, New Jersey, and has been a museum ship there since October 15, 2001. The USS New Jersey, obviously a uh, really, really, really cool ship. I mean, who doesn't love the modernized Iowas? Um, every kind of everybody kind of refers back to them and seeing a battleship kind of brought into a more modern type of conflict was something that we never thought we would see, and we got to briefly see it with the Gulf War and all that. Um, obviously, the Iowa class, a very iconic and probably the most iconic battleship really out there today. Um, Maybe besides that, like Yamato or Bismarck, but uh, it's basically the pinnacle of American uh, warship designs, and this here is the absolute pinnacle of the Iowa class. Um, obviously, this design here would work for both the uh, or the other sister ships as well that were modernized um, to a similar extent. Um, the one we just particularly did is uh, New Jersey, and really, I don't think there's much difference at all between the other sisters that also got. Uh, the upgrades to the modernized missile systems and all that stuff. Um, overall, really cool ship and should make an awesome addition to your BAFTA build fleets if you're looking for kind of a cool 1980s era uh, battleship to add into your fleets. Before we go ahead and jump into taking a look at this build, I do want to go ahead and give a special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you already do, feel free to check out my Patreon page. There is a link in my video description of all my videos and Basically, the Patreon will allow you to become a member and get the awesome perk of having a vehicle request of your choosing per month for your patron. It really helps support the work I do on my channel and obviously is super appreciated and all that stuff. So feel free to check that out and again, links for that is all in the video descriptions. Uh, with that though, let's go ahead and dive in here and take a look at USS New Jersey BB-62. So going ahead and jumping into it, we have the front bow of the ship here. One of the main differences you're going to notice right away is the addition of this, um, this uh, kind of... Uh, system or some kind of array um, in, in the front here, some kind of instrument, uh, which is not present on the World War II ones. We then have the two forward guns um, located here, the bridge. Uh, one of the things you're also going to notice here is that there are a lot less anti-aircraft guns uh, replaced with these phalanx uh, missile systems, uh, more modernized kind of equipment. It still has some of the 5-inch dual um, guns here on the ship as well, so those are still present here. Uh, we have the conning tower, uh, obviously a bit remodeled here with some more um, different uh, equipment and all that stuff added onto it to make it again more advanced and to operate the missiles. In this kind of midsection here, we do have our ship-to-ship uh, -ship missiles located um, in this section here, and there are also missile batteries located on the back here as well. So that's quite a bit of missiles, a uh, very capable ship, as well as some more failing systems there for protection from missiles for its own. Sake. A lot of uh, more boats and uh, deployable rafts and all that stuff on the sides here. As we get to the back, again, more some more instruments. And we then have the rear turret as well as the helipad on the back here, which would be able to accompany one um, naval uh, 
Blackhawk or Seahawk. Uh, overall, really cool looking ship and will make an awesome addition to your BAFTA build fleets. I know a lot of people have asked for a modernized Iowa class for some time now, and we are finally getting it. I would also recommend, if you are a big fan of the Iowa classes, to look, take a look at the concept carrier version that we did in Manco a little while ago. It uses the same ship, um, pretty much for the most part, uh, modified to actually have a flight deck, as you can see on the back there. Uh, which is pretty cool. So feel free to check that one out as well. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and move into the modernized USS New Jersey. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer, we'll be going ahead and start with layer number one. A few things I want to go ahead and mention, though, before we go ahead and jump into this, is if you're completely new to my BAFTA build tutorials, the way that the Shark Street tutorials, I like to do half on camera, half off for the first few layers here. This will probably be the first about four layers in which we'll go, we want to go ahead and build the center line and then the right side will be up to you guys to take the right side and copy over to the left side this ship is completely symmetrical so whatever we do on one side will be done to the other so um nothing should be too uh complex to go ahead and copy over but once we get into the more detailed sections with all the superstructure turrets and all that stuff we will go ahead and start doing the whole layer all together to make things a little bit more uh easier in terms of um you know putting things on um, with that though, uh, before we go ahead and kind of start placing blocks, we do want to make sure that we position this correctly in the water. Obviously, many of you are probably going to want to build this ship in the water. That's totally cool. If you want to do that, you will need to make sure that you build this basically this first layer, one block underneath the water surface. This blue line here is representing that water um, surface there, and that red right there is representing basically the um, layer one. So just make sure that you have that all set up and good to go before we go ahead and get started. But with that, let's go ahead and dive into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a row of red concrete. Um, this row is going to go all the way down the center of the ship here for a total length of 47 blocks. So quite a long row. Um, so after your 47 blocks, you're going to go ahead and place down two brick top slabs here on the very end, and that's going to finish off your center line. So again, really simple center line, and um, we'll continue on. So after we have that done, we're going to then go to the um, second and third red concrete blocks from the front. So the front obviously being this way, and we're going to place down our... Uh, case with trap doors. We're going to go ahead and skip a space and then place down one, two, and three red stained glass panes. And then after those glass panes, we're going to place down one, two, three brick walls. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six red concrete, um, which is going to continue on with seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, eighteen, twenty, two, one, twenty, two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, and thirty-five red concrete blocks back. After we have that all done there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and then place down two brick ups downstairs, two brick walls, and then a um, birchwood slab like this, and a acacia wood sign on the side of this um, this wall here. We then want to place down a red stained glass pane and a brick wall going back from that. Now, after that is all done there, we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves a brick top slab, and we're going to place down a top slab that's going to come off this second red concrete block here, then a narrow top slab like this, followed by two brick ups downstairs. Once we have that all complete, we're going to go ahead and grab our lightning rods. We're going to place down two lightning rods, going back like so, and then a birchwood slab on the end there of those lightning rods. We'll then take our red concrete. We're going to go forward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 red concrete blocks forward. We're going to go ahead and place down two brick ups downstairs, and then a brick top slab like that to go ahead and bring us to the front of the ship there. Now coming off this row here, we're going to go ahead and count one, two, three. In our fourth block back, we're going to go ahead and place down a brick top slab and then a second top slab, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen brick ups downstairs, two brick top slabs. Uh, once we have that all done there, that is going to pretty much uh, complete that. We should have a total of sixteen stairs, two top slabs on both ends there. And looking at it from above here, this we should have for the top-down view with this layer all complete. Take some time, make sure that both sides are copied over completely um, fine. And once you're for sure everything is good to go, then that is going to complete layer one. And we'll be moving on up to layer number two now. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to begin, we're going to place down a brick wall on top of this red concrete block, followed by a second brick wall back. We're going to go ahead and place down a long row of red concrete going all the way down the center here for a total of 49 blocks. Then two brick top slabs and then a case wood trap door on the back there. We're going to go ahead and place down a case wood trap door the side of this slab here and we then want to go ahead and place down two stairs like this one two upside down like that going forward. 
We're going to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, red concrete blocks forward, then 1, 2, 3, brick walls, 1, 2, 3, red stained glass panes. After we have that all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a red stained glass pane coming off this uh, third block here, one more glass pane, and then we're going to go ahead and then place down two brick walls, one, two. Then we're going to take our red concrete, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, red concrete blocks, and uh, this is going continue to continue on with twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, red concrete blocks here, uh, going down the center here for a total of thirty-one. Now we're going to then place down uh, a brick upside down stair here, which is going to be followed with a second stair and a top slab. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and then grab our uh, red stained glass panes and we're going to go ahead and go to the fourth, or rather the one, two, the third uh, red concrete block here. And we're going to go back one, two, three red stained glass panes, then one, two, three brick walls, which will then be followed with a row of one. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 red concrete blocks. Then 1, 2 brick walls and 2 red stained glass panes like that bring us to the front. On the very sides here, I do want to go ahead and also throw on that from the previous layer I did forget to mention. But on the fourth stair on each end, or so our row of brick stairs that we have on the bottom here, we're going to go to that fourth stair from each end. And we're going to place down a row of signs in between those stairs. So it's going to basically... Fill in the space in between here, and that right there is pretty much what you want. Uh, that right there is basically it for that, and um, that right there will bring us to the end of layer number two. Again, here is an aerial view of what it should look like. Make sure both sides are transferred over at this point in time. With layer two all complete, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number four. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to start with, we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall on top of this brick wall here, and we're going to go ahead and then go back from it with a row of stone, Going all the way down the center of the ship here and on top of this um, acacia wood trap door. So here's going to be a total of 53 blocks in length, just like that, um, going down the center. Now after that's done, going back up to the front here, we're going to go and grab our light gray stainless panes. We're going to go up the second block here and then one more glass pane back, followed by one, two, three, and the side walls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 46 stone blocks back, and then a light gray stained glass pane. We're going to go ahead and then place down a glass pane, come out the second block here, then the third, and then we're going to place down one, two, and a set walls, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. 20, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 32, 33, and 34 blocks forward, then two anti-side walls, and two light gray stained glass panes. After that, we're going to go to the side of the fourth block here, or sorry, the third block, and we're going to place down a light gray stained glass pane, then a second pane back, and then two anti-side walls. This will be followed with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 stone blocks back, 1, 2, 3, anti-side walls, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 light gray stained glass panes. After that's all done, that right there is going to wrap up everything we have for layer 3. Again, taking a look at it from up above, so it should look like from the top-down view with that all complete. With that all done, that's it for layer 3, and we'll be going ahead and now moving on up to layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we've moved into layer number 4. For layer 4 to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin with by placing on a stone block that's going to go on top of this anisite wall, and then a stone upside-down stair going forward from it. We're going to go then go back from the stone block with a row of... Um, stone that's going to be a total of four so you have a total of five going back from that stair then we want to go ahead and place down a row of stripped birch wood logs or wood that's going to go all the way down the center here for a total of 44 um, in length and you want to make sure that they're all facing the same direction so just make sure that they're not um, oriented different ways or whatever because you'll have those lines and they will kind of mess up the uh, cohes cohesiveness of the deck then we're going to go ahead and place down two gray wool or sorry three gray wool blocks, then another strip birch wood block, and then a stone block on the very end here. We're going to go ahead and then place down an andesite wall here, then one, two, three, four, five stone blocks forward, two more gray wool, 
and then one, two, three, four, five um, strip birch wood, two gray wool again, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, and twenty-eight. Uh, strip birch wood forward and then one two three four five six seven stone blocks two andesite walls a white stained glass pane and then a and or a light gray stained glass or a white stained glass pane and then a light gray stained glass pane also on the front side here we are going to go ahead and grab a item frame we're going to place it on the side here of this stone block as well as a crossbow in the item frame rotated face downwards once we have that done we're going to go ahead and grab our glass panes here we're going to place down two on these two, last two stone blocks like that we're gonna go ahead and then place down two andesite walls, and then one, two, three, four stone blocks, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, uh, strip birch wood, then two more gray wool, then one, two, three, four strip birch wood, and then one, two, three stone blocks, two andesite walls, and two light gray stained glass panes like that. After that, once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and place down light gray stained glass pane. Come off this stone block here. And then one, two, three along the side here. Then one, two, three inside walls. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty stone blocks, two inside walls, two like gray stingless panes, like that going back. And after we have that all done right there, that is going to wrap up what we have here for this layer. You'll take what you do on the right side, flip over to the left side, and this is what it'll look like from the top down view. Um, this will be the last layer. We're going to be going ahead and doing half on, half off. The rest of the layers here will be the full um, layer all done together. So just keep that in mind as we get into those layers. But with that, that's going to do it for this layer thing. And let's move on to layer five. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number five. For layer five, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a stone brick slab on the front here and then skeletal skulls around that slab. Then we want to go ahead and place down a row of two of stone slabs across. And then we're going to do Go ahead and continue on for row three of daylight detectors, which will turn to night mode. We're going to go ahead and then place down a cobweb to both sides, daylight detector in the center, which will turn to night mode again, and then a row of three of daylight detectors across again. We're going to go ahead and place down a redstone repeater here, separating the notches like so, two iron trap doors going back on the sides, and then one there in the middle. We're going to go ahead and then grab our uh, birchwood pressure plates. We're going to place down one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're going to go ahead and take our stone brick slabs, which we'll grab from over here, or rather our stairs. We're going to place down a stone brick stair like, or rather we're going to skip two spaces back. And then our third space, we're going to place down a stone brick stair and a stone brick corner stair to both sides of that stair. Then going ahead and coming off of the stone brick stairs, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods. And we're going to place down two end, or two end rods coming off each stair. So it's going to be like this going forward. After that, we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks. We're going to place down a row of three across the space here, and then one uh, stone block in the center and we'll go ahead and grab a stone stair and we're going to place down a stone up sound stair coming off that stair like that as well as two inside walls on the sides there of those stairs. We also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a skeleton skull and we're going to place down a skeleton skull on both sides of this rear wall like that. Now after that's done on the sides of the turret we're going to go ahead and place down a tripwire hook to both sides here as well as a birchwood pressure plate on top of these two um, walls just like that. Now, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and do a little bit of an extra feature here, which is going to be using the item frame. And we also have the yellow stained glass pane. We're going to go ahead and place down two item frames underneath those end rods, and we're going to place down yellow stained glass panes in those item frames like that. And the same thing will be done over here. Then we're also going to do the same thing underneath these skeleton skulls, just like that. Again, that's going to be mainly a Java-only feature. We're going to go then place down a stone brick slab here in the center, and then we're going to go ahead and go back from this with one and two and three stone full blocks. Coming off the sides here, we're gonna go ahead and place down a, a light gray stainless pane, and then we're gonna go, ahead and go one and two stone blocks back, one and two, like so. After that is all done, we're gonna take our pressure plates, we're gonna place down one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then one out on these walls here to the sides, and then light gray stainless pane. We then wanna go ahead and grab our stripped birch wood, and we're gonna place down one, two, three, strip birch wood across. This here will be followed with a stone block on both ends, as well as again, a birch wood pressure plate on both sides. Then for this section here, we're gonna do the same thing. So again, for strip birch wood across, then we have our stone blocks there and then our birch wood pressure plates. Then we're gonna place down a, another row of three of strip birch wood, and our stone block on the sides here. And we're gonna go ahead and then place down a iron trap door to both ends like this. 
Again, on Java, we can place down an item frame underneath that and a yellow stained glass pane to kind of keep that uh, color a little bit more consistent. Uh, this section here, we're gonna do the same thing. Three strip birch wood across, then a stone block to both ends. We will then place down a birch wood pressure plate to both sides as well. Again, three strip birch wood blocks across, a stone block to both sides there, and then again, an iron trap door on the sides there with a item frame, like race, or yellow stained glass pane, and same thing over here on this side. We're gonna place down two more threes, uh, two more rows of three of the uh, blocks here. And then we're gonna go and take our stone and we're gonna place down one, two, and one, two on the sides. Again, two birch pressure plates on both ends. Continuing now, we're gonna place down another row of three of strip birch wood across, a stone block to both sides, and this is gonna be followed for like gray stainless paint to the sides there. Our next row is gonna be a row of five of the strip birch wood across, this time followed by a stone block to both ends. We're gonna go ahead and go back to another row of three of the birch, and then a stone block to both ends, and a glass pane to both sides there. After we have that done there, we're gonna go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine rows going back of our birch wood. So it's gonna be just like this here. We're gonna take our stone blocks and we're gonna go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're gonna place down another strip birch wood and then a stone block to the side here, a stone block here and one here. And same thing will be done over here on this side. So one, two, three, four, five, six, a strip birch wood and then one, two stone blocks back like that. These spaces here on both sides of the stone block, we're gonna place down a light gray stainless paint. And we then wanna go ahead and go forward from this with a end rod, again on both sides here. And this will be followed with a uh, quartz slab and two quartz stairs back to back. After that, we're gonna then place down another end rod here in front of the quartz stairs like so. And also on the side of the quartz stairs, we're gonna place down two birchwood signs and same thing over here. Once we have that all done, uh, we wanna go ahead and continue on this back section here. We're gonna place down a birch, strip birchwood block here, stone block to both sides, and we then wanna go ahead and place down a anisite wall. After that, uh, we're gonna place down a, another row of three of stone blocks, another light gray stainless pane to the sides there. Then after that, uh, we wanna place down a, uh, after the light gray stainless pane, we're gonna place down another glass pane here to both sides, and another stone block there in the center, and then lastly an inside wall like this going back to go ahead and finish it off. Now on the sides here, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves our birch wood uh, pressure plates again, as well as this time some gray carpet. We're going to place down a total of one, two, three uh, pressure plates, one, two, three, and then one gray carpet here on both ends. We'll also grab a white bed, and on top of this wall right here, we're going to place down a white bed, like so, again on both sides there. For turret number uh, three here, we're gonna start off by going ahead and placing down a stone upside down stair, just like this, and then one, two stone full blocks going forward. We're gonna place down an inside wall to both sides of the stair and that first block there, as well as a narrow block to the sides up here in the front, stone brick wall in the center, stone brick corner stair to both sides, and we'll then grab our end rods and we're gonna go ahead and go one, two, one, two, one, two, back like that. And once we have uh, that all complete, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a trip bar hook, turn off the side of the stone blocks, and we'll also go ahead and grab our stone buttons here, and we're gonna place down a stone button, like that, to both ends. And then coming off those walls here, we are also gonna go ahead and place down a skeleton skull, coming off both sides. After we have uh, that done, uh, we wanna go ahead and then place down a stone brick slab here in the center, and then a stone button on both ends like that. We're also gonna go ahead and place down a white bed that's gonna be located here on both sides. And then we're gonna go ahead and place down one, two, three, four uh, gray carpet and one, two, three, four gray carpet. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and also place down one, two, three, four gray carpet here and one, two, three, four. In that center space, we're gonna place down a inside wall as well as a end rod on top of that wall. We're gonna go ahead and then place down a gray carpet here. Then we're gonna follow this with a white carpet and then our gray carpet and then we'll go ahead and take our redstone repeater and we're going to place it on the stone blocks to both sides like so 
And then uh, lastly here on the back, we're gonna go ahead and place down a stone brick slab. That's gonna be on top of these two uh, walls here. And we'll take our birch with signs and we're going to run around these two sides of the slabs. Then we're gonna place down an end rod in the center and going up from the end rod, we're gonna place down an iron bar like that. And that right there is going to basically uh, form up everything we have here for layer number five. It's probably gonna be your longest layer. We do have a lot going on there and basically just a lot of um, structuring there of a superstructure and all that. Uh, but looking at it from the top down view, this is what we should have with that layer all complete. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to our next layer, which will be layer number six. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer six. For layer six to start with, we're gonna place down an end rod on top of this um, skeleton skull, and then we're gonna place down an iron bar here. We're also gonna go ahead and basically knock out this uh, little front kind of array system by going ahead and placing down a polished blackstone wall on top of this daylight detector, as well as an iron trap door to both sides of it. We're gonna go ahead and place down two narrow brick fence posts up, and then a wither skeleton skull on the very tip there. On all four sides of the bottom fence post, we're gonna place down end rods around them like so. And then on top of the end rods, we're gonna go ahead and place down uh, some barrier block, or yeah, some barrier blocks like this. And we're gonna go ahead and take our stone buttons and we're just gonna go ahead and place down a stone button on the sides here and just kind of wrap them this around the barrier blocks. So as you can see here, we're just kind of wrapping them around and place them on the sides here. And that is gonna basically kind of create your array there for the front. So pretty simple stuff, nothing too complex for it. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and then move back to this section here, and we're going to go ahead and set up our next turret. Our turret 2 is going to be a stone brick stair here, stone brick corner stair to both sides of the stair, as well as two end rods going forward. And then we're going to go ahead and take our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of three, going across this space here, with a trip bar hook on both sides, and there are two stone blocks down the center here, and we're going to go ahead and then place down a row of two, fan side walls to the side there, and then lastly, in this very center, we're going to place down a stone upside down stair with a skeleton skull coming off both sides of that inside wall. Now, again, the same thing that we've kind of been doing here for our Java players, we can place down an item frame and then a yellow uh, stained glass pane in the item frame. Same thing over here. Now, after that, we're going to go ahead and then place down a inside wall that's going to be in the center here. And then we're going to place down a stone block behind it, as well as an inside wall to both sides of that stone block. We then want to go ahead and place down a another, another stone block like so, and then a smoker. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a smoker to both sides of this stone block. So it's going to look like this here. We're going to go and then take our skeleton skulls. We're going to place down a skeleton skull at a slight angle like this. Then we're going to place down a skeleton skull kind of going the opposite way. So it's going to sit on top of that pressure plate. And then this last skeleton skull is just going to be kind of straight on. So it's going to be like that there on the sides. We'll then take our Birch pressure plates, we're gonna place down one, two, three. And same thing over here, one, two, three. After that, we're gonna take our stone blocks, we're gonna build a row of three across this space here. Then a second row of three after that. And we'll take, take our light gray stainless with panes, place down one, two, and one, two on the sides there. After that, we're gonna place down two rows of three of our stripped birch wood. Again, try to make sure that these are all facing the same angle or same direction. Then we're gonna place down a third row of three, then a fourth row and then a fifth row going down the center and we'll stop for right there now when we get to this point here we're going to take our gray like gray stainless paints so we're just going to run this all the way along the side there of those blocks so it's just going to run all the way along the side we'll then grab a stone brick stair and we're going to place down a stone brick stair on top of this stone block like that for our five inch guns and this will be followed with a birchwood fence gate coming off the stair opened up toward it and then lastly, on the side of the stair, we're going to place down a birchwood sign. So that's going to kind of complete your five inch design there. Then we're going to place down an end rod on top of these two end rods here. And in the space in between, we want to go ahead and place down a, a light gray bed. So it's going to sit on top of that stair, like that on the sides. Then taking our stone blocks, we're going to place down a row of three here, then a second row, and then a third row. Uh, we'll then take our Anisite walls, we're going to place down an anisite wall, stone block, anisite wall, same thing here, anisite wall, stone block, anisite wall. Then we're going to take our stone blocks again, build a row of three across, a second, a third, and then four. And we're going to continue on five, six, and seven, so all the way to this section. Uh, along the sides here, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, and three uh, birchwood um, trap or birchwood pressure plates. 
And we're gonna go ahead and then grab our glass panes again and we're gonna place down one, two, three, four glass panes and one, two, three, four. We're gonna place down an air stone block in the center, glass pane here to both sides, and then a stone block on top of this uh, andesite wall there, as well as a skeleton skull to both sides of that stone block on the very end there. We also wanna go ahead and go back to this stone block here and we're gonna go ahead and place down another secondary battery with the stone brick stair on top of that stone block. Again, the birchwood fence gate uh, coming off of it pointed toward the stair and then a birchwood sign on both sides of the stone brick stair. After that is all done, uh, we then want to go ahead and grab gray carpet and on top of the full blocks here on top of turret number three we're going to place down gray carpet. We also want to do the same thing for turret number one here in the front. Uh, unfortunately we can only place it down on these blocks here uh, but you do want to place down the gray carpet where you can and that will kind of add that darker color to the top of the turrets. Um, with that all done though, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for layer number six. Just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go. So again, that's going to do it for layer number six. Taking a look at it from up above here, that's what we should have for the top down view so far with that layer complete. Anyways, with that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, which will be layer number seven. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number seven. For layer seven to get started with here, we're going to place down a uh, row of carpet that's going to be on top of our stone full blocks, as well as a smoker block on top of this andesite wall. We're gonna go ahead and then place down a one and two stone full blocks going back from that smoker block. And we're gonna go ahead and place down a um, stone stair coming off both sides of this stone block, as well as an iron trap door, like that. After we have that all done, uh, we then wanna go ahead and grab our birchwood signs and we're gonna place down a birchwood sign on the side here of the iron trap door and the stairs. So it's just going to go ahead and wrap around like this on both sides there. Now after we have that done, we then want to go ahead and place down a, another stone block in the center. And this is going to be followed with an andesite wall to both ends. And we're going to go ahead and place down another stone block and another andesite wall back. After that is done, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone upside down stair to both sides here. And then a stone full block in the center. And then we're going to place down a stone brick stair here on top of this andesite wall, or that light gray stainless pane. And then we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate coming off the stair going forward, birchwood sign on the side here of the stairs. And then after we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and build one, two, three, and four stone blocks down the center. Now when we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, skeleton skull here, same thing here. And we're going to go ahead and angle this a little bit. And, or actually rather this is going to be straight on. So this, those ones are going to be angled there, straight and the middle one's going to be straight on, and then this one's the side here are going to be angled. So that's going to look like that on both sides there. We're also going to place down a stone upside down stair in this space here. And then we want to go ahead and place down a um, iron trap door to both sides of those. And we will go ahead and adjust the um, stairs so that the back of the stair is facing toward the outside. So it looks something like that there. Uh, once that's done, we're going to place down a stone block here in the center. And then going back from the stone block, we're going to go, or rather to the side here, we're going to place down an andesite wall to both sides. And then continuing on after the andesite wall, we want to go ahead and place down a row of stone. So we're going to place down two rows of three of stone going across. Then a stone block in the center, and then again an andesite wall to both sides there. We're going to go ahead and place down two more rows of three of stone going back, one stone block in the center, and then a gray carpet to both sides. Now to kind of go ahead and expand upon what we just did, we're going to place down iron trap doors on the side of these two stone blocks. Then we want to go ahead and grab andesite walls, and then coming off of these two um, blocks, we're going to place down andesite walls like that, and same thing over here. Then we're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves birchwood fence gates, and we're going to place down a fence gate here, open that toward the front, and a fence gate here which will open toward the back. And we're going to go ahead and connect this row across between the fence gates with a row of three of fence gates. So the same thing will be on both sides there. So it's going to look like that. After we have that all done, uh, we want to go ahead and then take our stone blocks. And we're going to place down um, a total of one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, or rather, my bad. Got a little hit myself looking at the wrong thing. We have this set up so far. Uh, we're going to take our gray carpet, we're going to place down one, two, three down the center here, and then a smooth stone slab to both ends. We're going to go ahead and place down one slab going in like this, and then a gray carpet in the center there, and then a gray carpet there to the sides. Um, this uh, 
gray carpet or this gray carpet we're actually going to delete and we're actually going to go in in its place replace this stone block with a gray wool block and then on top of that gray wool block we're going to place down like gray stained glass pane this will be followed with a stone block then a glass pane on uh, these four sides all four sides of the stone block a smooth stone slab here and a smooth stone slab here on this glass pane same thing over here just like that then we're going to place down a stone brick stair on the very back here and then to the sides of the stone brick stair we're going to go ahead and grab a end rod and we're just going to place it on both sides so just like that and after we have that all done right there that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number uh seven and with that all complete, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to our next layer, which will be layer number eight. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number seven, for, or sorry, layer number eight. For layer eight, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down an iron trap door on top of the smoker like so. A uh, sign coming off the forward section like this, and then a skeleton skull to both sides of the iron trap door. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a gray shulker box. We're going to place it here in the center, then an iron trap door to both sides, as well as a birchwood sign coming off the sides here of the trap doors as well. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then grab another brick fence post, and we're going to place this fence post here to both sides. In the center, we're going to place down a gray carpet. Then we're going to place down another uh, light gray shulker box, like so, and this will have, again, an iron trap door to the sides. The center here, we're going to place down a gray carpet again, followed by, again, an iron trap door to the sides, and on the sides of the fence post and the iron trap doors, we're going to place down birchwood signs. And same thing will be done over here on this side just like that. Once that's done, we're going to place down a stone block here in the center, and we then want to go ahead and place down a scaffolding on top of those uh, stairs, as well as a skeleton skull coming off the side of the scaffolding like that. We then want to place down one, two, three, and four stone blocks down the center. On top of this iron trap door here, we're going to place down another iron trap door, which will be followed with birchwood signs around these two sides, like so. Then we're going to place down a shulker box right here, which will be followed with a skeleton skull coming off the, so off the uh, shulker box, and also a narrow brick fence post coming off the side here of the stone block. Same thing will be just done over here to the other side. So just like that. After that is done, we're going to go ahead and then take our gray carpet, and we're going to place down a row of three of gray carpet across the space here. We're going to go ahead and place down two gray carpets down the center, and then two rows of two of the smooth stone slabs out to the sides there. Once we have uh, that all complete, we're going to take our stone blocks, and we're going to place down a row of three of stone blocks across. This will be followed by an iron trap door to the sides here. And for my Java players, we're going to go ahead and uh, type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick so this command here and this will give us this debug stick what we can do here is we can go to the iron trap doors we can left click them until we get selected open false we can set that to open to true and it'll actually close those trap doors on the sides there now it's not completely necessary to have these it's just kind of more for shaping purposes you can replace these with birchwood trap doors if you want or you can just go ahead and disregard them altogether if you do not have access to a debug stick um, anyways though continuing on uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a um redstone repeater here in the center we're going to separate the notches like that and then a polished direct stair like that to both sides we're going to go ahead and then place down a cobweb behind the stairs and then one more cobweb going back like so and also uh going back from these stairs here we're also going to place down another stair like so on both sides then just two stone blocks in the center there going back to this section here we're going to place down a stone block this here will be followed with skeleton schools around the stone block like that and we then want to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate, or yeah, fence gate that's going to be on top of the stair, opened up toward the back, with an oak wood trap door, which we're going to close like that on the back there to go ahead and make this uh, range finder, some sort of um, gunnery type of equipment. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude everything we have for layer number eight. And uh, again, here's an aerial view of what we have so far for the ship. And we'll be going ahead and now moving on up to layer number eight. 9. Moving on to our next layer, we have layer number 9. For layer 9, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and first grab some um, iron bars, and we're going to go ahead and go up from the skeleton schools here in the front with a total of 1, 2, 3, and uh, just 3 iron bars going up. Same thing over here. And we're also going to do the same thing to our narrow brick fence posts. So we just have those antenna going up. 
We're gonna place down a stone button on top of this block here. And then we want to go and then grab a stone brick stair. We're gonna place it on top of this uh, block here. And to both sides of that, uh, we are gonna go ahead and just grab an end rod and we're gonna place down an end rod to both sides. Just so we don't have to worry about it later, we're also gonna place down a birchwood fence gate on top of this stair here, just like we did for the back. And we're gonna go ahead and place down a oakwood trapdoor coming off of it, like so. We'll also grab ourselves an item frame and a light gray bed. We're gonna place down an item frame, a light gray bed in the item frame, rotated sideways, and a birchwood sign over it if you're on Java. If you're not on Java, just place down the item frame and the bed rotated sideways, and we can actually do the same technique here on the back stair as well. So, uh, since it is the same type of instrument, we'll do the same thing on the back there for that stair like that. Um, anyways though, continuing on, we're going to go ahead and then place down a um, redstone repeater that's going to be in this space here. To the sides of this, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves some diorite walls, and we're going to place down a diorite wall on those two scaffolding blocks. Now, once you have that complete, for my Java players, we're going to go ahead and basically build a block of space out to the side. So one, two, delete that first block, and one, two, delete that first block. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and then grab ourselves a tripwire hook. We're going to place down a tripwire hook on the sides here of these stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and left click them like so till we get selected facing. We'll then right click and rotate these around to connect these up to the direct walls to kind of help create a better look for our phalanx. Um, you know, missile defense system. Uh, obviously, that's going to be a Java feature. There really isn't any good alternatives if you are on a different version. So, unfortunately, you may just have to leave the walls as they are. Um, continuing on, though, we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, and four stone blocks down the center here. A narrow brick fence post on top of this one here to the sides. And the same thing we did before for our stone brick stairs, we're going to be doing the same thing here, just on top of those blocks like that, an item frame, and then you like gray bed sideways as well as, again, a birchwood sign on the side there as well, if you can, um, you know, put it. And again, same thing over here. So just like that. After that is done there, we're gonna go ahead and then place down a direct wall on top of these two blocks here. In the center between those direct walls, we're gonna place down a repeater. And we're gonna go ahead and use the same technique that we did before, again, for my Java players. We're gonna build two blocks out, delete that first block, a tripwire hook, and then we're gonna go ahead and then Rotate the tripwire hook till it comes off the wall. And that'll be done on both sides, and we'll delete those blocks like that. Then we're gonna go ahead and grab some diorite slabs, and we're gonna place down two slabs on top of the cobwebs here, again for some missiles um, located in this section here, and then two stone blocks going down the center. This space here, we're gonna place down a stone brick um, stair, and to the sides of the stone brick stair, we're gonna go ahead and place down a birchwood fence gate, and on the ends of the fence gate, we're gonna go ahead and place down a skeleton skull. So just like that, and just so we don't have to worry about it later, we can also place down an iron trap door on top of the stone brick stair to go ahead and finish that off. Anyways though, with that all complete, that's it for layer number 9. At this point in time, I think we'll just go ahead and move into our final layers of the build, and just go ahead and complete what we have left. So with that, let's move into our last final layers. Alright guys, moving into our final layers here, we have layers 10 through 18. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a stone block on top of this one, and we're going to go ahead and then grab a light gray shulker box and place it going forward sideways. On the sides of the shulker box, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, as well as on the side of the stone block here. We're going to go ahead and then place down a andesite wall that's going to be behind that stone block. Again, a skeleton skull on the sides here. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block that is going to go directly in that center space. So it's going to be right here in the center. And then we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate on top of these two stairs, open them to the sides. And again, like we did up here for this forward one, we're going to place down an oak, oak wood trap door, come off the side like that, and close like so. Or open however you want to look at it. Then we want to go ahead and go back from this with a piston. Like so, if you do not have access to a debug stick, like Java players, then I would recommend probably a polished blackstone slab instead. And then on the sides of it, we're gonna go ahead and place down some oak wood, or some wither skeleton skulls, as well as a dark oak wood sign on the back, on the side here of the piston. After that is done, uh, we do wanna go ahead and grab some dark oak wood fence gates and some another brick fence posts. And we're gonna go ahead and place down a total of one, two, three fence posts that are going to be going up from uh, the center here or from that black concrete block as well as three fence gates going up which we'll go ahead and have opened up toward the narrow brick fence posts. 
Then after that is done there on the back, we're gonna go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three. A fence post going up as well, and these will have wither skeleton skulls on the sides here of them. So just like that. Then using our debug stick here, we can go ahead and right click that piston to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion and finish that off like that. Then uh, once we have that done, we're going to place down a another inside wall on top of this space here and another stone block like so. We'll then place down a uh, skeleton skull that's going to come off the side here of the wall. And then a fence gate that's going to come off the side of the stone block, which we'll have opened up toward it like that. We then want to place down another gray shulker box on top here. And then a birchwood fence gate coming off the uh, shulker box going forward. To the sides of it, we're going to go ahead and build a stone cutter. So like that. And then we're going to place down an iron trap door in the center. And then a skeleton skull to both sides like that. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair up on top here. A birchwood fence gate to the sides. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull to turn off the fence gates. Then we just want to go ahead and place down a iron trap door on top of this stair like that. And we'll also grab a wither skeleton skull and we're going to place it down on top of this forward fence gate like that. For this top section here, uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of create this radar platform um, that we have. And this is going to be started with a upside down polished blackstone stair on top of the narrow brick fence post. So it's going to look like that. And we then want to go ahead and place down a top slab going forward from it. On the sides of this top slab, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull. On the sides of the stair, we're going to place down a polished blackstone top slab. Then we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of top slabs on the back here. Come off the sides of those rows of three, we're going to place down two dark oak wood fence gates to both sides there. Uh, we also want to go ahead and grab some iron or some end rods. And coming off these fence gates here, we're going to place down a end rod to both sides there. Then uh, going ahead and expand upon this, we want to go ahead and grab some iron bars. We're going to place down an iron bar on top of this outer fence post or fence gate, and then we're going to place down two end rods going up from the inner ones. Then we're going to place down an arabic fence post here in the center. This will be followed with two end rods up and then an iron bar. We're going to go ahead and then place down an anvil that is going to sit here, a row of three of iron bars, and then an end rod going forward from that middle iron bar. And after we have that done, that's gonna pretty much kind of complete our front um, superstructure or conning tower, and that's really all we have for that. Now, after we have that done, we're gonna go back to this section here, and we're gonna go ahead and grab our black concrete. We're gonna place down our black concrete here, and then our shulker box, or rather our piston. We'll go ahead and then take our dark oak signs, and we're gonna go ahead and wrap them around uh, these two sides here of the piston, which will be followed with a skeleton skull here on the end and then we're just going to right click our piston get rid of that wood portion like that we'll also take our dark oak wood fence gates we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate coming off this black concrete block open it up toward it and our fence gate on top of that one this one here will be opened up toward the front and then a end rod to both sides of the fence gate with a wither skeleton skull on the very top here of that fence gate like so after we have that all done, the last thing for us to do here is going to be a little bit of rigging, and it's pretty straightforward and simple to do. What we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and go to this end rod here. We're going to place down a barrier block coming off of it, and we're just going to go ahead and kind of go up here at an angle, uh, basically a giant staircase going up until we connect up to that slab, and the same thing will be done over here on this side. So again, just kind of working its way up at an angle like so, and we're going to go ahead and then place down our stone buns here on the sides of those barrier blocks. After that is all done, we then want to go ahead and grab our barrier blocks again, and we're going to go ahead and place down a row of four going down from that inner fence gate. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to place down one, two here. Now for this, we're going to grab our, bear, our buttons, and we're going to place down uh, a button here, and a button here, and then one here. We're going to go ahead and go down one, two, then one, two, then one. So it's just going to kind of go down like that. And it's going to kind of stop around this section here. Um, now after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. So we have one, two, three, four. And we actually bring this down. Uh, or no, we'll leave it at four. And then our two 
like this. And we're just going to go ahead and do basically the same thing that we did before. So going down and just like that. And then for the little bit extra on the bottom here, we can place down a lever on the bottom of that barrier block and flick it toward the inside there. And same thing here. Just like that again for your rigging and all that stuff. And after we have that all done, that right there is going to complete what we have there for layers um, 10 through 18. And with that, that will complete my tutorial here for the modern USS New Jersey Iowa class uh, battleship. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do again using this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This can be a thing from a sign of the build to link to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, your freezer for a project you guys are working on overall, enjoy the build, have fun, and all that fun stuff. Again, a big special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Foss Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 204 and I'll see you guys next time.